Hey, what's up? So good to see you as always. So today we're gonna to be taking the track I made last week using the microphone and the found sounds from around my house and take that ugly duckling unmixed track from this and turn it into this. This is gonna be easier than you think because we're gonna be using all default Ableton plugin stuff minus one free plugin and doing some light mixing, some light arranging. And then I'm gonna be using the Zendelay more as an instrument in aiding the arrangement process and gluing things together and not so much as a set and forget delay. So it's super fun, super simple. Enjoy the ride, it might be a long one, but let's get into it. So first you'll notice here that I have a lot of EQ8s from when I was originally putting this track together using the microphone just to fight a lot of the low end. And that's probably one of the first things that I would consider doing is shaving off any of the low end that you don't need because it will rob headroom from your mix and ultimately kind of start distorting things a little later on and not letting them have the energy that they deserve. For example, this here, this was my Velcro knee strap. And then this here was my wood block, which I, don't know where it's at anymore, but you can see that I took a lot of this low end out because if we leave this in here, you can hear it's a lot boomier, right? I use this as a way to sort of lower the volumes, but for the most part, just get a better mix of the track because a lot of this low end I don't need in order for this wood block, which I'm gonna rename right now, to sound like a wood block. And same here, what's this microphone? Oh, this was an interesting sound. So this without the gate was me messing around with my coaster and a spoon, but I didn't like the initial pop, pop. So I got rid of that using a gate, but the gate actually introduced these cool little moments that would sound like a ch 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 right? Which is really dope because if I solo this with it, the drums, it just adds this cool texture beneath it. We'll play that back here. Take this gate out. I thought that this sounded too busy. So outside of a couple little creative fixes here, I didn't do much mixing, but I think we can get this sounding a lot better. And one of my favorite techniques when it comes to mixing is really just looking at my levels and getting a better sense of how loud things are in the minus six at a time type of groups. I've talked about it before in this mixing video as well, but the quick explanation of it is you kind of want to separate your, and this isn't a rule by the way, but you wanna separate your elements by six dBs each in terms of importance and it gets you in a rough ballpark. And then from there you can kind of use your ear to really massage it into place. So for example, if we were to just listen to our drums, I'm gonna go ahead and take out our vocals and piano chords and all that stuff. I'll put this in another group for now and just mute them. Play this back, there's all our drums. Now you can see our kick's at minus 12. This is kind of minus 18, and then this is uh, right under minus 18 between minus 24, which is great because that's kind of ballpark as to where I wanted these things to be. But I'm actually gonna take this utility off. I'm actually gonna push our kick up to minus six. I'm gonna lower my headphone volume because I honestly don't like mixing too loud. Uh, I feel like it, I don't know, distorts or my color or emphasize certain things that I'm not actually hearing. So cool. Now the next most important element for us to find after getting our kick around minus six is I'm gonna find our clap. And we have a few claps here that I can just go ahead and drag into this uh, Digitac group. And our claps are coming in pretty hot, but I'm gonna lower those down to minus 12. Now I'm just trying to pick out what elements I want to mix with our drums well. I like the kick to be at minus six, that's a good ballpark. And then any like big rhythmic things that wanna happen around minus 12 as well. So for example, these coins, these coins are pretty loud. I want them to be right around minus 12. Go ahead and muting this. Mute this out of the way. Get our coins out of the way. Now, of course, this is really messy. There's a lot of things going on, right? We can take our wood block, lower this to minus 18. And then our coaster. We can push that up to minus 12, but for our coaster specifically, I'm gonna put a compressor on this to really grab the louder parts of it and bring up the quieter parts because it's kind of jumping around. And if I drop our threshold here, so it starts getting a little action, it's gonna just even out the, the peaking of it. So it's not jumping up too high. And then another thing that you want to take into consideration 
mainly because this has the gate on it, right? Which is way over here. Another thing to take into consideration would be something like a free plugin called Soft Limit. And this is by Apogee, I believe, yeah. And this will basically just take any of those digital transients that are really robbing our headroom digitally and kind of soften them up and make it act a bit more analog and old school. Again, I can never bring this uh, plugin up without mentioning John Tejada, mix master engineer of everything you ever can dream of. <laughs> He's amazing and I'm so grateful to have him as a friend to teach me these things uh, and then explain them to you probably a little poorly or he's probably, you know, face palming. But look, I'm hitting a little bit of a clipping here and it's grabbing those transients. And now our transients aren't really jumping above minus 18, but the sound didn't change that much. And if we take this off, again, the sound didn't change that much. But with it on, it brings up some of the quieter. It's almost like a, a really intense limiter. It brings up the quiet, but pulls down the peaks and gives it a more neutral, even approach to your sound. So playing this with everything else, it's kind of in a nice little even spot. And a lot of times I'll put this on almost everything, especially claps, because those have such quick peaks that show up in the meters when you're mixing, because those, again, when you're just going by meters and looking at them digitally, it reads a lot faster than we actually hear or faster than like analog components can produce. So it might show that we're hitting minus six dBs, but the clap itself, the actual sound of it is way quieter than that. So then if you're just trying to take its digital peak and bring that down to minus 12, the actual core sound of your clap is probably really quiet. So this is a good way to kind of get that balance going. So let's try it again with our claps. We'll go here, solo our claps, and I'll grab a soft limit, holding down option, dragging this over, Listen to that. It brings up a lot of the quiet. Bring that up. And the other thing to note is auto makeup is on. Um, we're gonna go ahead and drag this over here and just get a little bit, just to tame it. Sweet. And now that we're not passing this point, I can actually bring this up a little bit in the whole entire mix. A little more even, a little more subtle, right? Listening to this here, this is our closed hat. We'll say uh, closed hat. Awesome, there's no EQ on this. I'm gonna go ahead and put an eight. And you can see that there's almost nothing down low and that's because I did a lot of the mixing on the Digitact itself. Like if we were to go and look at that sound, um, what was it, track four? Oh, this is a whole brand new project anyway, so it's not on there. But I do some of the rough EQing on the Digitact itself, which is why none of it's showing up here. But just to be safe, I'm gonna go ahead and grab this, put it here. I kind of like that little clunky low bottom end. That's cool, let's bring this in. Same thing here, we'll throw an eight on here. EQ eight is what I'm referring to. And you could even play around with this. It doesn't have to just be corrective, right? It could be creative. Like maybe I like that, right? And then if you really wanted to be safe, we can duplicate this, get rid of that, double click these and reset them. And I don't know, <laughs> you know do whatever you want. Do two EQAs, you could do this all in this one EQ. This is a little too resonant for me. That's cool, let's see without it. Makes it stand out a little bit more. You can hear it kind of cuts through fighting this closed hat here when this is gonna be our open hat. And they're kind of fighting for the same frequencies, right? So you can see our closed hat, there's nothing under 1K. And then our open hat, we're kind of pushing that 1K range and I think that that's really where it's starting to stand out against the closed hat. Now let's go listen to our coins. We're getting out of the Digitact mixed world, right? I'm gonna go ahead and close our Digitact group for now. These were all recorded sounds using the microphone, the 1973. And if I drag an EQ on here, look at this. We'll take all this away. Look at all that. That's just probably the heater or the HVAC system or something going on. And we might not hear this, but it is taking away from our headroom in our mix. Let me see. That's beyond my world of hearing. But what's insane is look at this, what it's doing to our master. And look at that, it's hitting about minus 24 dBs of just 
volume and energy that is in our mix. So again, it's important to kind of get rid of these things. And now that it's not there, we bring up uh, number six and we get back all that that we were originally had without the excess baggage of all the other stuff taken away from our other elements. Let's say our kick, let's say our bass, right? It's gonna be fighting for those frequencies. And it was there, even though me personally, I couldn't hear it. Maybe you heard it. Maybe you got a crazy system. Maybe you got crazy hearing. Yeah, like right around here, I think is really cool. So without this one, oh Jesus, let's turn off two. And let's at least just put a regular low curve on here. Yeah, I don't think that makes much of a difference. So I'm gonna leave it here at one. I think that that's great. And it's always important to reference this back with the mix because um, if you don't, you start mixing sounds individually, making them sound really good, but then you don't realize that they might be clashing with other sounds. And right now, I think my kick might be a little too loud. And then I can bring this down a little bit as well. And then for these two hats, I think our close hat's a little too loud. I want that to be minus 24. And then this could be up a little bit, minus 18. Awesome. Closing that up. There we go. The coins sound good. Here's our shaker. Looking at our shaker, it just has an insane, absolutely insane uh, side chain. And the reason it got really nuts is because I did that whole utility thing and I swapped them off of the main Digitac group and put them on the individual kick. So I'm gonna go ahead and lower our gain here. There we go, that's more like it. Now, same thing, throw an eight on here, cut off some of these lows. Looking at this visually, if I wanted to just use my eyes, I'm gonna say, all right, from there down, we're good. And you'll start to notice this pattern. We're cutting things around 1K when it comes to these percussive shakery high-end elements. And then a lot of our bass is gonna kind of be in the under 100 range here. So this leaves this entire pocket 100 to 1K for what? Well, melodic things, possibly, maybe your main sample or chords or vocals. That's where a lot of that's gonna live and fill up this space. I kind of try to think of mixing as you have a room full of cool stuff and you want everything to really shine and be seen because if you have a million cool things, it's really hard to appreciate them when they're all piled on top of each other. So that means you're gonna to have to sacrifice a couple things and sacrifice a couple sounds, bring the volume down of certain things, just so that everything fits in its place nicely. I hope that makes sense. It's not the best analogy, but that's kind of what comes to me in my head. Now, going to our coaster. This one's sounding pretty okay, right? If we look at our coins, minus 12 is cool. I like the shaker to be minus 18. And then the coaster, I want that to kind of be a little louder. I thought the coaster actually sounded pretty cool. Yeah, I see, I dig that a lot. And then the wood block, da, 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 might be a bit distracting, but we'll put it down to minus 24 for now. And then uh, it already has an EQ8 on there, that's fine. And Velcro's here at minus 12. So I'm gonna put the, the Velcro and then the shaker kind of in the same range because that's gonna be kind of with our claps and stuff, right? That I really liked. If we go and listen to our claps here and then our Velcro and our shaker, I think that those fit really well. And the other thing to note is that I have everything going right now in this track for our drums. And most of the parts do not have everything going because it is a little messy. All right, group number one, here we go. Listening to this little loop here, this is gonna be another busy section with like everything going. Right, I'm gonna just bring in our kick for now. All right, our chords, got a crazy filter on it, I can hear. We'll go ahead and uh, open that up for now. And look, same thing, this has that wild compression on there, my bad. Okay, this is a main element. The loudest element of our track is gonna be the kick, minus six. Next, main elements are gonna be at minus 12. I would need this to be a little louder. I could, of course, just raise this, let's do that. 
that's sweet. I'm gonna go ahead and add a compressor on here, do a little side chaining. And of course, open this up, side chain input from what? It's gonna be our DT kick. Drop this a little lower. Let's find a little faster attack, a little slower release. That's fine. You wanna hear the extreme? Too extreme. The best part about getting this in a ballpark is I can then take this, hold down option and drop it onto our little piano lick. But see this, I don't want it to be as side chained because I love the way that that sounds. So I'm gonna leave it really light. Our organ. Can we drop it a little bit? And I want this to be really fast, really harsh. And then I'm gonna go back to our chords, which is a softer one, and put this one on our strings, which... Oh yeah, that works. And then with the bass, let's try the bass out. A little higher. Now, we got most of our side chaining done, and I'm not gonna side chain some of the percussion stuff because I'm gonna leave that up to the main glue compressor, which we'll be adding on the master later. And that'll kind of help keep everything kind of pumping and moving and grooving to a specific kind of BPM or whatever we kind of set the threshold and the release to. Now, listening to this back here. We got this at minus 12. Our little organs here at minus 24. Our piano lick. Could be a little louder, right? I'm not gonna push it past. I'm just gonna use a utility. I just bump up the gain here. That's cool, and I'm actually gonna run the piano lick through the Zen delay. That's the part that I really wanted. Our strings, listen to that. They're way, 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 way back there. And I'm gonna throw an EQ8 on here, and you can already see that they're pretty far gone. If I open this up all the way, and just kind of look away and hold down, down, while I open this up, I'll find a nice spot for them. That's cool, I like that, right there. Look how much I cut out. Wild, wouldn't realize it. Now our bass, this needs to come way up, right? Because looking at it here, it's pretty quiet in comparison to everything else, especially our kick. Minus 12 is good with me. Let's just see what minus six sounds like. Two power. Yes, I like this minus 12 area. Now this is an important thing to take into consideration when it comes to our bass and our kick. We need to decide what is gonna be the main driving element. Is it our kick that's just pumping the dance floor or is it our bass line that's getting people to groove and kind of move? In this case, I want our bass line to be the main element of the low end of our song. So using an EQ8, I'll put it on here and I'm gonna set this to like this four pole low, uh, high pass filter and I'm gonna just set this to 23. We really don't need anything below 23, honestly, maybe even 25. But what this means for our kick is I'm gonna take the same EQ8, put it on our kick, but bring this up to 50. Now, you might have heard it, maybe you didn't. Now, let's just listen to our kick and our bass and see if you can hear the difference. So, I'm gonna take this off. I don't know about you, but I can hear it. It might be placebo again. Listen to the boom, 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 boom. Not the initial hit, but the meat right after the initial hits. I feel as if I'm hearing that they get a little muddy when this is turned off. And that's because I'm shaving off all these frequencies down here to let the bass breathe and let it have its time to shine. You can really hear it nice and clear. Without it, it's doing this like right? It's strange. But again, similar to the low end of whatever the shaker was, those coins, that would have all been fighting and robbing itself from one another in this low end area. So I'm happy to kind of shave those things off. And trust me, 50 hertz in a club on a good system still punches somebody right in the gut. You won't be missing anything from your kick. Bringing that out. Bring these back in. Yeah, I'm down with that. 
going to get rid of these two as well. We don't need those running. Now, let's go to our vocals. This is way in the background. You can see both of these here if I open these up. Minus 24, that's cool, but why is this running box? Look at all that. What are you doing? Sir, may I help you? It's all low end. Again, look at that. And I don't want that. I don't need that. So again, with the four pole high pass, Open this up a little bit. And then let me go over here and I'm just gonna take these two so I can really hear these. And then go back. EQ8, same thing. And if we look at our vocals group, I had to desaturate it to kind of get it a little gritty, a little dirtier. You can already see I have this huge EQ8 on here but to help alleviate its work, I went ahead and added this high pass. And then my favorite thing is this delay. Because this on the fourths, when you have a long uh, play like this with some drums, let's say we got these in here. Right, that's pretty cool. But watch with the delay. It just adds this really cool, like bouncing vibe to the whole thing. And I think that that works really well when you throw in the bass. Right, and then with everything. All right, let me give this a nice little listen to make sure we're doing okay. I even think our chords are a little quiet. Oh yeah, they're very quiet. So, same thing with our chords. I'm gonna go ahead and use the utility. Bring them up. They're probably short, maybe four. And then throw a compressor on here as well. And this is just gonna be to kind of level them out a little. Slow attack. Lighter ratio. I'm gonna put the utility after this actually. Now, our compressor is really squashing this. You can see this in the transients here of our second compressor. So let's see what happens if we put this at the back end. It's changing the way our compressor is reacting, which is evening out the chord itself before compressing it. Which I'm actually fine with. Yeah, that's cool. A little chorus ensemble, a little hostile to give it some stereo width. And then I have some automation on it as well. Now, pressing H, uh, command A, Z, boom. Let's get this out of the way. All right, let's get some arrangement stuff going and get this Zen delay working. So we have a couple different parts here. I'm gonna go ahead and select this whole section here up into 17 and just hit Command I. And that's gonna insert time for me here. Now, if we go back to our drums, I'm gonna just go ahead and take this first part of our drums, Command C, and then I'm gonna paste it here, Command V, and then hit Command D, 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 get that over, and same thing. Command I, give us some space. So I know what's our working material to not mess with this and then what we can be building here. I'm not mad at this. I mean, it's a little busy. Maybe the coins don't need to be here just yet. Oh, you know what doesn't need to be here? The coaster. And on top of that, uh, yeah, the, the open hat here is already down, which is great. And maybe even our wood block is a little too much. Yeah, that's cool. And you know what? Let's try something weird. Let's try it with no kick for like the first, whatever, how many bars this is, 16 bars. That's cool. And then what if we brought this in? And then we brought in our kicks. Yeah, that's not too bad. I mean, it's a little rough because our kick just comes blasting in. Once we get the compressor going and stuff like that on the master, it'll sound a little better. But this is okay for now. So I'm just gonna highlight this, hit Command Shift D, and that's gonna duplicate everything. I don't have to select, I can just select this little square here or this little square here, and Command Shift D will duplicate this entire column 
over within itself. So if I do it again here, it's going to add it there, but I don't want that. So now on 17, we want this to be built up a little more. Same thing, Command Shift D. What else can we add here? Maybe our open hats can come in. Actually, you know what can come in? The coasters can come in here. And then uh, how about we start bringing in our chords? So I'm going to take this entire section, Command C, bring it in here. Hit A to go to our automation. And where is our filter? Boom. Let me turn our uh, automation back on. And you can see here we have a couple things going. But I want this to be really low. About here. Boom, boom, boom. Try it in a little faster. That's cool. I'm going to turn our lock on. So that's going to stop it from duplicating our automation. So same thing here, Command Shift D. It didn't duplicate our automation though, which is what I prefer. So now that this is here, it's going to stay open. We can go ahead and get rid of our kicks. Just hitting zero to disable them. And then this is great for me because I can say, grab these two. Da -da 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 -da. And then we can kind of just keep this rolling, right? Let it take a little break. Da -da 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 -da. And then bring it back in with a kick. Da -da 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 -da. And then go into like a little fake breakdown again. Or something that I really enjoy doing is here, watch, I'll, I'll move this here, or we'll take this, um, this section here. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this. Command Shift Delete will do the same thing. Take that entire column, get rid of it. So check this out. We're gonna go here, get rid of these, and I'm gonna zoom in on here. And I'm just gonna give the listener uh, five kicks. That's all you get. And on this fifth kick here, I'm gonna bring it over just a little early. Throw them off. Awesome, and you heard there's a little pop there. We can iron that out. Bada bing, bada boom. Bring that here. And let's see what we're working with now. So it goes from this into Then the kick comes back in and you're like, yeah, party time. And nope, it's not. And now maybe here we bring in the bass line, which would be really weird. And people would be like, what the hell is going on? I don't understand this track. And maybe that's a good thing because it's got their attention. So I'm gonna copy that entire bass section, paste it here, but delete this whole little section here. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and drop this. No, not there. We'll move our bass vocals up just so I can get a little closer to this group. We don't need this microphone channel anymore. All right. Ah, yes, so the early kick happens right here, right, if we zoom in on this. And this bass hits right there. And I'm gonna just go like this, and zoom in on this little piece, get that there, boom. So it's gonna go boom, boom, dun, 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 dun. Ooh, and then I want the rest of it to come back in. So we're just gonna go ahead and copy this over. Now we're just rocking into the track itself, right? The break was very short, the intro is very short, but that's fine. We're not going for the typical 16 bar breakdown. I'm totally fine with that. But you can hear that there's just like no break, no movement, no nothing. That's gonna come from a fix with a piano lick, which we'll do in a sec. And our chords can actually use some automation to be bringing their filter back down just a little bit, just for some movement. Sweet, and to kind of give a sense of more movement, I'm gonna use this like confusing, it's kind of like a sleight of hand. There's this kick thing going on with the bass line. I'm gonna use that as a moment to take our shaker out. Actually, to make things easier to handle, I'm actually gonna go in and select this entire section. Actually, we'll do this entire eight bar section here. Hit Command J. 
that's going to consolidate these into single clips so that they're a lot easier to manage. And I'm going to do the same here, and I'm going to do the same here. And one thing I did was this weird evolving, revolving, like three bar copy pasting of all our claps and kicks and things like that when I was recording stuff with the microphone to give it some more movement across time. So this is another way to do this weird, like it resets every 16 bars or every 32 bars across these weird patterns that I originally pasted and duplicated. So duplicating this around, duplicating this around, same with this and same with this twice and this twice, we can kind of get a better view of where we're trying to land, which is right here at 65. I'm fine with that. And same with these sounds here, let's go ahead and grab their little eight bar sections and consolidate them as well. Okay, cool. So now this section where the kick comes back in, I'm gonna go to our shaker and use this as a quick chance to get rid of it. Let's see what that sounds like. Ah, I'm gonna mask it even more with the bass. So I'll bring this over just to here. And then I'm gonna use this as a moment to get rid of our coins. Again, sleight of hand. And now that this is here, I can use this, which was used originally to build more energy into our up hat song or into our up hat track, the ksh, ksh, watch, listen to this. Yes, there it is. And I can even bring this over here just so it rolls in a little smoother. Yes. Same thing, I'm gonna keep all this out. And watch if we bring it back to the Velcro, or the coins, or this piece. Nope, I don't want any of that. That doesn't work for me. I do this thing that always ends up confusing me, but you can look at uh, Ableton, how it's got this like dark gray section and then a light gray section here. I start throwing myself off by just doing this like weird, <laughs> like four bar breakdowns or something like that. So if you ever wanna remedy this, you can just command A and drag everything over by one bar. That way I know, okay, cool, I'm working in this section is where things kind of come back in. Cause there's this part. And maybe I even thought of it wrong, let's see. It's almost like that part comes in. And then here, you know what we're gonna to have to do? As weird as I wanted this to be, might be a little too weird because it's coming in on this like 24th bar right here. It's just missing this little section. So where it wants to land is right here. So we're just gonna have to go crazy with the kicks and the percussion to really let it ride out and get to this point. So chopping this up, we're gonna go ahead and zoom into this little section, which is just our kicks. You can see they're really tiny. So I'm gonna grab this. I'm just gonna put a couple slice marks down here. I know that I need to get to right here. Grabbing this, moving this over, grabbing this, bringing that there. We'll grab this whole section, bring this here, up, up. Put that there, let's see what this sounds like. This is gonna be nuts, I'm telling you right now. Okay, so we're almost there. Boom, 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 dun, dun, dun. And then I want this to be, again, bring back this kick here, and we're gonna zoom in on this little section here. Holding down Command, Option, and Shift, I can drag this over a little bit, and then using our gain, I'm gonna bring this clip down a little quieter, more than it already is, believe it or not. Now listen to this. Boom, boom, ba da dun. Almost there. Maybe I pushed it off a little too far. Yeah, maybe a little too far. So we'll just drag this over and just bring our gain down a little bit. And then looking into this little section here, I'm gonna grab this, bring that down, make this a little more staccato, give it a little more room to breathe. And I'm holding down command so I can get this to not be snapping to the grid because without command, it's just gonna be jumping like this. But if I hold down command, it could be a nice smooth movement. Awesome, and then this could be even quieter. And then I almost hear a boom, 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 right? So we can go boom, uh, 
Boom, bring this down a little bit. There it is, now it lands nicely. So I don't know why that window was so big and why I was working like that for so long, but here we go. So here's this little, yeah, the groove's back. Just kidding. Baseline, new hat, kicks up. Awesome. And in that, we're also gonna have to add, I don't know if you heard it, but I sure heard it, a new track called Symbols. And this will say, how about a crash? We'll look for a crash. Yeah, that one's cool. So I'm gonna put this here. And then I'm also gonna grab it, put it right, uh, holding down command and control there. Boom, boom, command R, R actually, not command R. Command, shift, whatever options that I was saying before. Wheel that in. This is gonna be way too loud. We'll set this to minus 20. Put an eight on here as well. A little high pass going. That's a little quiet. But check this out, we're gonna go, my favorite thing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this whole part off. And then I'm gonna throw a delay on here. I'm gonna set it to four. Move this really high up. Bring our dry wet down. Again, similar to the vocals, it's gonna give it that little bouncing, right? So we got this whole section. Awesome, we're here now, and our chords are still just kind of loud. I actually want them to be really low, and I'm actually gonna let this be a little more dramatic before it comes down. Yeah, I think this is cool. And I can also bring in our vocals here because it's, there's, you know, it's time for change. So I'm gonna grab our from what's, consolidate these baddies, bring this over, boom, boom. Sweet, now let's have some fun with this piano lick. I've kept you waiting long enough as well as myself. External audio effect, we're gonna say audio output two, we'll go to three, four which is this here on these cables, and our audio input's gonna be back in from three, four. Now if I go and solo this, let's see how we're working. There it is, easy peasy. This bypass is like the greatest And then a little less drive. Awesome, let's hear this back. Now there's a couple ways I can go about this. The one that I prefer to do, cause it's a little more fun, is I'm gonna open up another audio track and just have it listen to input three, four, um, which is it coming directly into my audio interface, not after this has been recorded. So this is just gonna be the affected signal almost as an audio sample. And I like this because then I can take it, chop it up and do some weird rhythmic things with it. And now that it's set up here, I'm just gonna go ahead and put it here and mute it. And when I'm ready to record it, I will. And I'm not gonna do that just yet because one of my favorite ways of using the Zen Delay is as an instrument. So once I get the arrangement done, I'll use the Zen Delay to play a part across the entire thing and then possibly take chunks out of that to place them around rhythmically or just keep it as one long take. But it's always fun to just have it here so I can just mess around with it. Right. Check this out. We'll, we'll get rid of these. 
So this coaster is going along with the up hat. And this is, if I leave it in, it's in there, right? And it has energy, this is cool. But if we take it away with the sleight of hand thing, it brings us down to have something more to give later and bring it back up right here. Listen. And it's back. And if we bring the shaker in, but we bring in the shaker in later, maybe here. Actually, you know what? Let's leave that out because our filter is coming back up. And now, boom. Shaker's back. This is going. Maybe we take the wood block out. Hell, we probably could have taken the wood block out for this entire section here. Let's see. Yeah, we could have taken that out for this entire section. Again, giving us more gas to push the energy level later. You start bringing this stuff back so you have more to give. Don't give it all you got, Scotty. Not yet. Just save it for later. And what else do we got? So this kind of plays out nicely. I think that this works all the way up into this point where our uh, filter comes back up and then maybe this can open back up again. Oh, yes, please. Dun, 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 dun. So then I'll bring this in and we'll get rid of the kicks here. That's cool. Grab our strings. And you can hear that our piano came back really loud without the kick. And I kind of don't like that. So I think what I'm gonna end up having to do is create a ghost kick channel. So just duplicate our kick here. I'm gonna go ahead and mute this and call this kick ghost. And all this is gonna do is live a four on the floor kick across the entire length of our track. And this will just be used for sidechain purposes. And if we go back and look at our sidechain, it's now sidechain kick ghost, the way I did it. So when our kicks actually do come out, we can go ahead and just color this something different too. We'll call it white for ghosts. And then uh, I'll drag this all the way down and out somewhere so it doesn't bother us at all. We'll hide it down here. Cool, so now when this comes out, the kicks come out, our piano doesn't just come launching back. It's still gonna have a little bit of movement and groove to it. Yep, you can hear it there. The same thing with our cymbals. I'm gonna go ahead and copy from here to here, duplicate that. It's just gonna lead us into this little nicely. Maybe bring our coins back. Our piano comes back a little too soon. Here we can even break this down a little more. Maybe leave our coins out. And then here, check this out. I'm gonna to go to our utility, grab our utility, automation, grab our gain, and uh, zoom in here just a little bit. Boom, and just drop this section down, have this fade out over time, just using the utility. That way I don't have to worry about my mixing things. And I'm gonna copy this over to our Velcro track and that will also have the automation on it. And what else slowly disappears here? Our coaster track would also be good to have this on here, boom. So this will just slowly fade everything out, leaving, leading it into the section here, which then I'll take our bass out. And then for our strings, I'm gonna let these slowly fade in. So using a utility as well. Utility is so utilized when I'm using and making these tracks. We'll drop this here, bring this down. Let it come in a little faster. There it is. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and take 
this little section of our kicks and put it here, but zoom in here and get rid of some of the wildness at the very beginning. Maybe I'll put it there, get rid of that. And then same with our, uh, our chords, that can come back down. Oh, this is gonna sound good, I can already hear it. Drop that down to about here. And I heard this uh, in my head, which was a point where the chords drop out and then all that's left is this like organ and the kick and the bass and all that stuff. And I think that that would actually sound pretty cool. So we're gonna go ahead and say, Wait, hold on. See, I'm getting mixed up already. Da -da 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 -da. Oh, right. So we need everything to kind of come back in here. And our strings are doing this really long thing here. So this whole section needs to be up and running again. So what I did with our chord automation actually needs to be right here. And then these need to be gone. Our organ's going to be back. Strings could be gone. And then our bass will be reactivated. And then same with our kicks. But this whole kick section here, I want this. You know what, I'm gonna go ahead and consolidate that just so it's a little easier to see. Paste that here, get rid of this, grab our kicks from here, and drop that in there. And zoom in here, get rid of this whole like little intro section here. Ah, oh, yeah, 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 that'll be cool. Okay, pretty dead. But this can be fixed because we need to open everything back up. We'll bring up our up hats. Bring back the Velcro. Keep even that shaker. And then we gotta get rid of the piano lick as well. Let's see what these sound like. What about it, quiet. That's cool, and the coins are a little distracting now. Oh, they added a lot though. Maybe just quieter. Maybe they're just too loud in the mix overall. And then I don't like this opening back up. Hit B, pencil tool. Yeah, right in that range is fine. Okay, cool. Duplicate this over. Now, the rest of this is gonna be getting it to the next little breakdown, which is gonna be kind of similar to the one that we just had, except in the inverse, right? We're gonna go from this middle section to a calmer section and then out, because we're already pushing the 3.30 mark, and I usually end my tracks around 5.20. So look at this, we don't have a lot of runway to get to this ending, and it's gonna be really easy because we have a lot of elements. But just for fun, I'm gonna go ahead and record in some of this piano lick part because I think it's gonna sound really cool. Cause look, we only have the piano lick here and here. And I think it makes such a big, cool sound difference when it really comes into getting it moving and incorporated into the track. It's just such a fun process that I wanna show you that now. Cause I know this video is getting long, but check this out. Go ahead and hit record. Open up our feedback a little bit. Now I'm just recording. Watch this. I can grab that with the feedback. Fade it out. And then slowly move the delay time. While the other part fades in. Ah, too sick. Turn our feedback down so it just slowly dies. Make sure there's nothing left. Awesome, and I'm gonna do the same here. We're gonna roll it in a little early just so I can really get the vibe for it. We'll turn loop off. 
and cut off high this and this there should be good. Let's see. Lastly, we're going to add a glue compressor to really get this whole thing bumping and moving and glued together. So I found this main section here where everything's going. Looking at our master, we just have a limiter here. I'm going to add a glue compressor, of course, putting it before the limiter. Now, listening to this, our glue compressor ain't getting touched. We'll bring our threshold down. Look how great this is. Get a bump in about you know this is showing you how many decibels it's reducing in our makeup game we can bring it back up so right now we're kind of in the same spot roughly if i were to take this off volume wise is not too different but energy wise it's really different this is showing us how much is being reduced and then you just take your makeup and make it up by that much so if you push this up to minus 10 and then push this up to minus 10 same thing we take it off about the same volume difference. So that's a good eyeball, right? But you can hear that this is really, really slamming. Let's see what we soft clip it. Bring our tack down. Open this up a little bit. So it's not hitting it as hard. And then your ratio, if you want it to be really squashed, 10, a little softer, minus two. I really like the way the default blue compressor sounds. I think they did a great job in picking a good ballpark range. Open up our threshold a little more, bring this down a little bit because now it's getting too loud. But the other thing we want to make sure is we're getting close to our limiter, right? So another thing we can do is do a multi-band compressor. I have one that I use all the time called Ricky T's Secret Sauce. Uh, link to it down below in case you're interested. It's free, by the way, also. So you can go ahead and download that. But look, I can see that our high end's not really hitting the points where I want it to hit. And if I wanted more bass, I push this up maybe to about minus 12. I can push our bass a little harder. Mids a little up. And then push our highs a little more. Now that really opens it all up. Sure, there's no main EQ on here where I can really notch out a couple things. But I think with this, our compressor here, if we were to group these together real fast, let's say this with this here this off versus this really gets it slamming really gets it pumping this is good for a club test right at least by my eyes and on top of that our limiter is not even being touched yet so i'm gonna start bringing this up until it starts seeing a little bit there it is look we weren't far off and it's that damn clap that's reaching up and grabbing all that headroom and that's fine i can i know that i mentally know that so i can push this a little further now this is really bumping. Look at that. There it is. Ah. Now let's hear this recorded version. We'll turn off our piano licks. Unmute these. Oh. Latency. Latency's way off. Let's fix that real quick. There. Same thing, I'm going to add an 8 on this just to make sure the Zen didn't introduce any low-end frequencies. So watch this. I can take this. This is what I was talking about with rhythmic elements. And I can just paste this at the beginning where there's nothing at because it all starts here.
right? Or I can do something like this. Right, you can just do some weird stuff if you really want to, but I'm gonna skip that for now. Another cool thing is you can even take this, copy this over to here, reverse that, flip it and reverse it, put your thing down, show me if you're worth it, and then zoom into here, and then all you need to do is kill a mifeframe yet. Look at that. Could work, right? You got elements to play around with. It comes from a, a, a solid core, a solid inception point that sounds the same as everything else. So it can work really well. Huh. And then this is just pumping and dumping. <laughs> the hurt before the squirt, my friends. There it is. Anyway, yo, I appreciate you, my friend. Thanks so much for sticking it to the end. If you did, let me know down below. And uh, yeah, until next week, you're another drill. Share the love, share the knowledge, knowledge and power. Peace.